from the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm some other guy. <laughs> you are now the most frequented guest we have. Two? Or have I done this three times? This is this three is times. Three for you. <laughs> okay. So you've, you've taken the lead from, from Emmy and Lynn, probably. And I guess Joel and Robbie. Joel and Robbie have both been on twice. Oh, no, Joel might be three times. Joel might be three times. This is bullshit, then. Schedule another one right after this. <laughs> <laughs> Just so split it. I did, I did email friend of the show, Emmy, today. So, <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, that's an, I'll tell you guys later about the rest of that conversation. Um, this is our show. We talk about anything and everything off-road. Because it's Jeff, I think we're a little more relaxed tonight. I'm not doing the normal uh, things that I say. Uh, as always, we're socially distanced. I'm still in the Midwest, Ross still in the Northeast, and Jeff's still on the West Coast. Yes, and sir. I, we 100% know that he's on the West Coast because his car's <laughs> behind him. Yes. <laughs> Unless if he's teleporting. Yeah. Nope, that's it. That's it. That's it. So you uh, just got, so yeah, we're going to go, we're going to go to the Jag before we go anywhere else. You just got sure, it back, sure. right? Off-road podcast. Let's talk about the Jag. 100%. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, shit, why not? Yeah. Yes, I did. Uh, it had, um, Front shocks, tune-up, wiring, passenger side window switch, so all window switches work. The passenger side exhaust was blown out, so that was done too. Um, tune-up, valve covers were leaking, so you know, new valve cover seals. Uh, just the basic going through of everything sort of thing. Is it like OEM shocks for the XJ yeah. or are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing okay. special there. Um, yeah, the only, the only non-JAG thing, I guess, is the... Um, the uh engine, engine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah just the big part yeah 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 i, I thought i went to the first pictures i didn't I need to go no 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 and what valve covers on a 350 take 45 minutes <laughs> I'm assuming i'm assuming <laughs> i've never worked on one. all no the idea. other stuff though was was annoying it's it's a good bill <laughs> yeah it always is yeah but it's it's it runs smooth. Um, the trans needs some love at some point, probably uh, um, maybe a re. I mean, it's probably the original transmission, 130,000 miles on the car, you know, so. Oh, it bolted up to the original trans? I didn't realize well, that. It's I thought it was like a 4L80E or something. I'm assuming it's the original trans because uh, uh, these Jags used um, either the Borg Warner three-speed or a GM hydromatic. Oh, uh, okay. okay. So they're, the parts are already basically... I don't know if that's the case with this car specifically, but I would assume if it bolts up and there's just like, you know, some kind of bell housing you, you attach to it and you're good to go, then. Dude, the leather looks really simple. nice. And I like there's a, that's a Nardi steering wheel that's already on it. And that thing looks huge. I don't know if it actually is, it's, but like. the picture. No, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's, it's very well fit to the car. Okay. Yeah, that thing looks clean. I mean, dude, the Jag horn button is fantastic. Jack horn button is sweet. Um, <laughs> I got my wheels. Um, so I, uh, I'm looking, well, I'm waiting on tires and then I'm putting on the gold BBS wheels I got for it, which will be super. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I saw, I saw you hunting those the other day. Yeah. And the Montero sits outside and cries, right? Didn't. Uh, no, I mean, that's where the Montero should live. The Montero was in here the other day though. <laughs> Um, cause I had to, uh, swap the seats in it, which is really annoying. Um, but, uh, <laughs> it's, it, you know, it never ends. You get, I mean, it technically, technically I have three project cars, even though I have two on my mind. Um, and, uh, it, you know, you think you have two project cars, one can be in the shop, the other one's good to go. And then something breaks in the one that's here and you're like, mother fucker. Like, so <laughs> that's what happened the other day with the Montero, but it's, I mean, yeah, I'll get it sorted. It's fine. <clears throat> want to talk about I'll new listen. cars for a second then? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do let's do new cars. Talk about something. <laughs> what's so wait? So what's your newest vehicle out of the three then? Um this is 86, the Montero's 91. So not counting our CX5. So 91. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so 91. yeah. We're jumping 30 years into the future. My my Mercedes is an 84 if we want to count that as well. I count it. It's still I think it's aging two years for every year that it actually sits. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. But at least I'm not paying to store it. So that's Fair. decent. So yeah, let's talk new ish 
Well, new cars. Yeah, new cars. Um, Ford Explorer Timberline. The idea is cool. The, the, the treatment on the front end is absolute bullshit. Um, because we're all going to get out of the way of those on the freeway when we the, see them. It's exactly the police the interceptor. <laughs> yeah, it's got straight LED. They're probably like six inch wide, one inch tall LED strips on either side of the Ford logo, which are, I mean, that's probably just pulled from the interceptor. It's, that not, they, it's not quite the exact grill, but it's like really fucking close. It's like 95% of it. I mean, they're going to sell these like preloaded with Blue Lives Matter stickers. And uh, <laughs> it's going to be a shit show. Probably. Um, I was looking at the engine specs though, and I'm curious what they've done uh, because it's the same engine in the Bronco Badlands, I think, uh, and it's 50 more horsepower. So it should show you that the Bronco Badlands can jump to 300 with no effort at all, which you could assume anyway, because every EcoBoost turbo engine, you just go blip and it's... Yes. Hello, Cobb. Yes. Yeah, that exactly. will be $600 and 60 horsepower. Thank Somebody you. Mount tune. Yeah. Was it the Ford Flexes? I, I could have swore somebody was like putting the, 600 horsepower into Ford Flexes. Yeah, the three and a half liter, the oh, yeah. twin turbo V6. Yeah, those things just are eco boosts. Like, the <laughs> SHOs too, or rockets. Know. But yeah, so Timberline is uh, dueler ATs, Bridgestones. Uh, it's got the actual front shocks from the police interceptor, skid plates, you know, um, limited slip in the back. I think I miswrote this and they're orange tow hooks instead of red tow hooks to, mm, you know, tow hooks. to say, hi, we're not Jeep. Right. And then, so the only problems, I mean, not only problems, but the, the big problems here for me are they quote the approach angle at 23 and a half and the, and the departure at 23, seven, they don't quote a breakover, which means they know it's bad. And then also they're saying that it's got like, 0.8 extra inches of ground clearance, bringing it to 8.7, which is it, still 0.8 less than the Outback Wilderness. It looks super <laughs> short. Yeah, but the Outback looks tall. Um, and I and I, I I know it's on the list here, and I actually cannot talk about how it drives. You can. Uh, you can. come out until two days after the embargo list. Are you sure about that? 100%. What day does this come out? You quoted us. The 17th is the embargo. Yeah, and I think we come out on the 19th. Well, right. now, you ha now you have to. I'm checking right now. <laughs> I, yeah, I was like, get the calendar up. Because if it does... Uh, Wednesday, not... Wednesday, May 19th. Yeah, All I right. have you posting the 19th. Do not push this earlier. No, no. This no, is going not. live tomorrow. No, I, yeah. I understand how this game works. Uh, right. It drives great. Um, it was super comfortable on road with no unnecessary... Um, it didn't feel wobbly or the suspension didn't feel soft um, or compromised. The road, the ride was comfortable off-road. It felt great. I what the suspension wasn't crashing, you know, it wasn't like reaching the limits of its travel, um, which was huge. Um, and the driving gun, it felt torquey. Subaru is one of the few that gets the CVT. Um, it, um, their CVT works well, um, put it that way. Um, so if you have a CVT, if I had to pick, if someone's like, you need to drive a vehicle with a CVT, I'd be like, well, then give me a Subaru. Uh, yeah. you know, even Nissan's like, we're done. You know, we, we didn't get it right. There's a but few Subaru, applications where Nissan is okay. Otherwise, yeah, right, would... right. But then jumping ship on the Pathfinder and the, uh, yeah, the Pathfinder is a huge, that's I mean, nine speed for the future Pathfinder mm -hmm. is awesome. Um, but I, it drove great. I, I don't think it looks attractive with all the cladding. However, the, the cladding is in areas to protect the body. And then also, mm -hmm. if you see in this picture, they actually um, angled the corners of the fascia for off-road clearance. It has increased departure, breakover, and um, approach compared to the standard mm -hmm. one. Um, so they, and they listen to their customers too. There's another really neat feature. When you open the tailgate on the inside upper portion of the tailgate, there's a cargo light that shines down, which is feedback Smart. directly from their uh, consumers. And it's something the Bronco Sport does too, mm -hmm. uh, which is funny. The copper, touch points on the outside or, or um, whatever you want to call them, action points or use points. It's kind of a nice design thing. Um, the backs of the back seats, the, se the second row seats are rinsable. Um, oh, nice. So like your dog can get muddy and jump in the back and just... 
close it they out. did a black headliner so if you're putting a bike in and you scuffed it like you wouldn't mm. really see it um smart the whole um dynamic load rating on the those roof bars because it's a ladder style roof bar instead of mm. you know the cheapo not cheapo but like the standard uh it's 220 pounds so that if you have you can put a tent up there and drive mm -hmm. you know it's the 700 pound static was they quoted um, and it's funny because they said they never saw any that's yeah that's the cargo light that shines straight down there's a uh, they everybody quotes a dynamic weight rating or load rating for the roof bars but nobody does a static one that they could find and there's a 700 pounds so when you have the rooftop tent you know it mm -hmm. can be you um a significant other some kids a dog you're not gonna get a dog in there but you know you can know that some people do have enough weight yeah yeah i mean I, i'm not bringing my dog in. well yeah if you had a little dog i guess it'd <laughs> yeah. be a big deal but my dog's like 65 pounds so there's like a lot of van life yeah. out there that wants that dog in that tent. yes right, a lot right, of right. instagrammers that are all about that right um but so I was very impressed. The nine and a half inches of ground clearance is as much as a G wagon, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's a tenth of an inch off a Forerunner. You know, so it's mm -hmm. it's it's impressive in an Outback wagon. Uh, I I was very pleasantly surprised. I, it didn't just feel like a lifted up wagon, and it it, um, it felt like a smartly engineered wagon that didn't compromise on road driving, especially because they didn't go to some super aggressive tire. That helps. Yeah, yep. it has the um, the Yokohama Geolanders, which are like not loud on the road, um, very mild. It's a very mild all-terrain tire, mm -hmm. um, which is all that thing needs. Um, now, if you wanted to on the second, you know, then throw if you could get the smallest KO2s in there or something like that, because it they downsize the wheels on that one too. Because oh, really? yeah, the Outback like Onyx or you know the other trims have 18s and this is 17s. Smart, mm -hmm. so great. They're so they gonna live, sell a fuck ton of those things. I think so. I we'll see. And, and they did another thing too that was interesting in the presentation where it was saying how like you have a WRX and those who seek deeper performance go to an STI. You have an Outback and those who see, seek more rugged adventure will go to their wilderness line. So that's the whole hmm. philosophy for them oh. if they're gonna hmm. do more of these, you know, in other models. It'd be cool to see like a like an Atlas wilderness might be kind of cool. That would be interesting. So it's a heavy vehicle. Yeah, not Atlas, Atlas um, Ascent. Ascent. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. I was like, why did he just quote a black I was like, not, not Atlas. They look the same. <laughs> to me, they look the same. They're the same thing. Dude, my, yeah, my no, mom I, has an Ascent, and uh, her main gripe is there isn't enough room behind the third row seat when all four when she like takes all four kids with her. I was like, Mom, I, I told you this. Like I literally yeah, yeah. gave you a spreadsheet that listed what you should. Have I <laughs> live in the Northeast, and I could not tell you the last time I saw an ascent. Oh shit! I they're just don't think they're moving there. them. Yeah. But no, I'm curious. I'm very curious to see if they do like a cross track wilderness. You know, I cross track wilderness would be cool. I mean, that's that's begging for it, really. Yeah, Brz it. wilderness. <laughs> that would be awesome. That'd, That'd be, be like best. Jethro's. Uh, oh my god! Yeah, the Z. Yeah. <laughs> uh ross i bet you've seen a sense and just assume they were foresters because from a distance or atlases like, or atlas <laughs> <Or Alice's. laughs> yeah i just i don't think they even it like it doesn't trip like once you're like far enough away from it like it just looks like every other super right like, it's just yeah, it a does. little bigger i'm grabbing another beer keep going Do yes, it. I will. I was, when is the last time you saw a b9 tribeca um when did i go to when i went to utah I saw like six in a week between Kansas City and Southern Utah. Well, that's where apparently all of them have gone. Ooh. What you got? Ready for a really weird flavor? It takes forever for this camera to focus. The What's four. PBK mean? Sour blonde ale? P peanut, peanut butter jelly? Butter. Oh my gosh. What? <laughs> that is an odd, odd beer. Marshmallow. I'll tell you, it's imperial sour with marshmallow, vanilla, black currants, and peanuts, and it's delicious. Oh. That's, that makes me think of the the Brian uh, Regan sketch where oh. they, they put peanut butter and jelly in the same jar. And he's like, I can't be bothered to open two jars. <laughs> oh, there's my dog. I say your dog barked earlier. And I was like, wait, can you hear my dog chewing on the bone? You mentioned it. Yeah, I could. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, okay. We so actually, there you go. Wilderness, you guys. The early scoop that technically comes out two days after the embargo exactly everyone yep. else all of the information that they've just listened to will have been available on the internet for two days yep. yes i really just to finish up the 
Outback thing. I really like the Outback. I think it, it's like the perfect vehicle for everybody who wants to go off road, but doesn't actually need low range. Like, yeah, it does everything that you need to get to a campsite or to, you know, go to a hiking trail. And it's like actually really comfortable on the road. Like, I don't know. I, every Outback I've been in, the seats were amazing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and it's funny too, because they point that out that their customers who buy those um, comparable to uh, like, um, you know, Jeep Cherokee owners and uh, other owners. Whereas um, a, a Jeep Cherokee owner, especially like a, a Trailhawk, will use their vehicle as the, as the means of adventure. And an Outback owner will use their vehicle to get to the adventure and then go mountain climbing, mountain right. biking, whereas the Jeep guy, the driving is the adventure. That um, makes sense. They totally get that. Um, and, and I was like, yeah, that, that makes sense. Jeep guys, you know, they want trail pinstripes and they want all that stuff. And, and the super person has to get somewhere. And then the wilderness people will drive past the campsite and go deeper into the woods. That's, that's their thinking. Like that, uh, the backcountry discovery routes, that outback wilderness on like a, you know, like a wild peak or a KO2, that's perfect. Done. Mm -hmm. Game over. Yeah, that's what I was thinking when I was driving it. Um, th there's this trail in uh, Malibu, believe it or not, uh, on this ranch. Yeah, it's, it's, it's way in, it's inland Malibu, up the hill a bit. Um, and it's, uh, it's called Calmigos Ranch. And um, I think they've done movies and stuff there in the past, but a lot of automakers will do off-road stuff there because there's a trail that I think originally was built with input from Land Rover back in the day. And it oh. kind of winds around the back of the property. And it, and it's, um, when the video comes out, you can see there's there's moments of actual, like this part where we had to clear rocks and, and some steep climbs and some tight turns. And there's a section they had signs up where it says like nine and a half inches of ground clearance. And in the middle of the trail, they purposely put tall rocks for you to go straight over them, right. uh, stuff like that. So it's, it's um, but while I was out there on those geolanders, which is a tire I would never buy because I want more aggressive, I was impressed with the tires, but also thinking if I had KO2s or wild peaks or something, or even open countries, I would care even less where I was putting a wheel. You know, KO2 yep. just bounced it off everything. Okay. So they're only like, the Outback is only like 3,700 pounds. And that's probably why they can get away with a tire like that. Yeah. You know, versus on something like a Grand Cherokee that's, it's that E rating or whatever. 4,800 pounds. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need more, you know, a, a thicker sidewall. But a Grand so, Cherokee doesn't need like ease, right? Because no, are, no, no, no. Ease overkill. Ease way. Yeah, we run think, ease on the I, tow trucks. I think I have D's on the KO2 and, and D's, I could probably get away with C's. You could get away with C or just like a LT, like a P rated tire, probably. I, I'm like 90% sure they're D's. And I, I didn't know yeah. about load indexes on tires until like a couple weeks ago when I saw a Dan Edmonds post <laughs> about load indexes because obviously he knows about that. Isn't it he funny knows how some often things. Dan educates us still? Like, yep. <laughs> We have to have him back on the show to now talk about his uh, his Forerunner upgrades. But yeah, the the tires that I put on the Forerunner, I don't know, three months ago, I didn't know they were ease until I was act until I was like literally like mounting the tires, and I was like, oh fuck, <laughs> this is gonna run like shit. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be loud. It's, it's like you're a cement mixer. Uh, they, it's fine. It's a uh, funny. Okay, temporary. so we we bought a Suburban. And my wife and I traded every other day for a week. And then she decided she'd rather drive the Sequoia. Hmm. Okay. I, and I was good. That. Like she can go either way. I don't care. But those open countries that are on the Sequoia are E-rated. Wow. So, and she's only driving it around town. Like she doesn't even take it on the highway right now. So she's not, she's not getting the full experience of the noise. That's that tire on the highway. So it was we had those, uh, the open country AT2s on my dad's 2,500 Silverado. The old one and and probably a hundred and fifty thousand miles on three sets of them. They were amazing. Wow. But yeah. I uh Jeff, I told Ross a story earlier. They've been doing like curb work on my street. So oh yeah. Like we had a we had a moat in front of the house for like a half a day as they <laughs> dug the trench before they put the new curb in. Um, but like tonight I they was the first night we could like drive back over and it is not like prepped yet. Like it's still like all ripped up and stuff and like the suburban with its 22s and low profile tires like i felt each bump as i went oh, over yeah. it coming up 
the sequoia i just kind of like pulled in it didn't feel anything it just went right up into the garage that's nice yeah so awesome uh let's transition so talking about the dumb suburban I so mean, the, the suburban, suburban yeah it, it, it's fixed it's not fixed it is fixed and everything is fine it didn't cost me anything it was just time dropping it off and then uh doing a carpool of one for two days because there's, <laughs> there's no loaner vehicles available like chip shortage like there's very little inventory on all my the dealer lots around me i think the most inventory i saw was bmw and i think that's just because people look at those and go those are ugly right now um that was completely non sequitur <laughs> um Works but, no me. like the gm dealer i bought it, or the gmc dealer i bought it at like they have like four trucks that's crazy and then I, I just drove by the Ford dealer today and they have like eight trucks. Like these are dealer lots that are normally packed all the time mm -hmm. and everybody's starting to thin out right now. Um, so yeah, anyway, so I bought a Suburban. It said right rear taillight failure the day I took it home. And I was like, this is exactly what I feared about buying a right. GM taillight. A -G -M. Um, so I it took it back. And they were like, you have aftermarket taillights. And I was like, well, that's horseshit. I bought it from you. You gave me whatever you consider aftermarket yeah. taillights. They were Escalade taillights. Somebody had put the Escalade bumper to roof line, giant LED things on the Suburban. Oh, did they look good? I, they didn't look terrible. Like it looked like- <laughs> It didn't work. So it doesn't really matter. Well, <laughs> everything but the turn signal, I think was working. So um, mm. anyway, so they tried to tell me that they were after, I was like, I don't, I don't care. As long as you make it, function right. in the back i don't care right. so they're like we'll put factory suburban taillights on it and i was like okay so the, i think they went down to like ls or lt like incandescent <laughs> bulb taillights there's a lease return on. somewhere that exactly. has one working taillight <laughs> and then so what took so long is they had to they then had to put in the trim piece that goes above the taillight because the other taillight had been there and they that's body color painted so they had to have their collision shop paint those two trim pieces, which is what the delay was of a couple. So of if days. you pop those off, though, if you had a suburban, you pop those off. You could fit the full length Escalade lights. You take so, off yeah. the plastic portion on the yeah. top, and you take off the tail light portion on the yeah. bottom. Correct. And just pretty cool. push in. Yeah, <laughs> and it just slides right in. Which that the service advisor was like, "Yeah, we see this all the time," kind of thing. I'm I like, bet. All yeah. right. Like, but I'm, I'm very happy in that it's regular bulbs. Like I can fix a regular bulb. The, my yeah. main concern with the LED unit, because I have heard stories One done. of the GM LED turn indicators failing at like 20,000 miles when they're supposed to be good for 20,000 hours. Like that's not, yeah. So it's back, it's functioning. I still kind of hold my breath every time I turn right. Be like, was it going to keep working? <laughs> yeah, it keeps working. But it, it's already uh, done its first turn as like the family wagon for Little League. Everybody fit, all the gear fit. It's doing exactly what we wanted it to do. So I'm actually looking forward because now it solves our Montana trip, Jeff. I don't have to oh. get a press vehicle. I right. could just nice. drive this thing. And it's, it's, it's kind of a land missile. Like it's only the 5.3. It's not super powerful. But like it's not underpowered because I'm also not towing right. anything. So right. five three is fine. It is fully like... loaded with kids. Um, it's got the four G LTE Wi Fi in it, which is dumb. But like the kids don't care. So right. um, they went through three gigabytes in five days, and they weren't <laughs> in it all the time. They were. There was just that's how many of them are in it. And I was like, I was yelling at the two boys that have phones. I was like, turn off your Wi Fi and stream through your fucking five G. You do not right. need to use the car for this. But the other two still ran through it in five days. So, but the DVD system works. There are four sets of headphones. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Perfect. It'll do Blu-ray. Like we're, we're good. Pretty content with it. Do you remember those things that you used to have to put on the roof of the trucks? That like rectangular the, the satellite looking TV thing, the satellite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I am, I am shopping for uh, crossbars for the top. Yeah. So, and I, I'll probably try to grab some factory ones, but it looks like, like, it looks like, um, there's just like pre-drilled holes. Like with everything else, it looks like you can slide the crossbars back and forth wherever you want. Like that looks like there's only like, uh, five points where you could put a crossbar up there. Maybe somebody like did a mount up there before and they were like, yeah, maybe, I don't know. I gotta, I gotta. It's probably a used car. Like you never know. Speaking of, of roof racks, we're we're going up to 
New Hampshire with the ATVs at the end of June. And we're trying to figure out a roof rack situation for my dad's truck. It doesn't, it didn't come with factory side, like rails on the side. It's totally slick. So it's, it's got uh, little tabs you can pop on. It's got nothing. Absolutely. It's totally like as sl- there's nothing there. Mm-hmm. So the options are like the ones that clip into the, you know, the channel in the door, yeah. which are fine or like drill through the roof of the truck, you know, it's yeah. not, neither is good. So I, I sent them a few options that are like bed racks, you know, yeah. like those big Thule or Yakima things that look like contractor racks, yeah. but they're actually like kind of perfect for just, you know, like a, a basket. So yeah, yep. I see that a lot uh, with pickups around here where they do um, like a mountain bike setup like that. Pretty mm-hmm. hot. Yep. Or like a rooftop tent kind of thing too. Yeah, the, yeah uh, for sure. So yeah, we're, we're exploring that. Um, yeah. Pivoting to that, speaking of quads. So we went on a, a local ATV trip last Saturday and, you know, it, it's not like a crazy place. There's nothing that you really even need four wheel drive for short of like, I don't know, there's like three different Hills that you need four wheel drive. Otherwise you can get away with two wheel drive the whole day. Um, I've been having trouble with power steering on my quad for the last six ish months. And when we got back, yeah, so I'm getting there. So uh, <laughs> sorry, I preempted with the oh, yeah. oh, you're here now. Yeah. So I took all the plastics off of the quad to try to start diagnosing the power steering issue. And I started pushing the quad over with my brother to the spot at their house where we wash everything. And as I was pushing it, I was like, something doesn't look right on the right front. And then I like saw that the axle instead of rotating on, you know, on its axis was just rotating all the way around as we were moving. So it needs an axle and uh, it needs power steering. So, it, so inside the boot, did it separate? So Polaris engineered the factory axles to have a fail point. So instead of binding the hub again, against the axle and the axle against the splines on the inside at the diff and grenading the diff. It just, there's like a fail safe at the outer side. So, so you could like, hopefully save that, stay rolling and get home. Sort pretty of much. Yeah. And so you don't kill your front diff, which is, you know, a $3,000 part. And it's probably um, relatively easy to do this repair. The axle's cheap and it's easy. It's, you know, it's like a hundred and twenty five hundred and fifty dollar part for like a OEM or OEM equivalent. Uh, the the job is pretty easy. It's just a matter of unbolting everything and bolting it back up. Right. The power steering unit is not cheap and not easy. Um, <laughs> is that the, what this is? Yeah, so that's the front plastics off of the quad and just so if you look down at the bottom of the image and great audio for the people listening, but <laughs> underneath. Uh, that red wire, the power steering unit is from the stem on the handlebars down to the power steering box. And the, uh, the local players dealer quoted me 2,100 bucks for the power oh steering unit. Whoa. I paid $4,000 for the quad. Dude. So, yeah. So uh, I'm going aftermarket is the one short of it. Plastic and the zip tie in the upper right. Plastic. Oh, that is the, um, the fuel filler neck. So okay. take the, the plastics have like a fitted fuel filler you know cap and then that pipe has a hose clamp and it slides over the bottom of the thing so you know it's saran wrap with zip ties so <laughs> nothing gets into the gas tank nice <laughs> so that's yeah. why you're working on ingenuity that's your... yes Got yes it. yep <laughs> if it works it works i mean shit. yeah sure so yeah so i have uh i'm i'm staring at you know the last weekend of june going uh, all of this has to get unfucked by then. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's tough for the power steering. That's tough. Yeah. I, I, when he, like, when he said 2,100 bucks, I was like, like, are, is that a joke? Like, right. Like that can't, can't, that's a straight face. Yeah. And then, and then he says, no, I could probably bring it down to 1900. It's like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you know, just buy a used quad. So, yeah. Buy a salvage quad and just rip the power steering out of that. So I'm just going to get like an, aftermarket new one yeah definitely but like the it's gas insane. tank gas tank has to come out to replace it like the wiring harness has to come out it's like a job so was the 2100 for the whole just the, that was literally just the part oh my god 
What? And it sounds like it's relative to quad maintenance, fairly labor intensive. It is. Oh, that sucks. Yep. So I'm probably going to do as much of it as I can myself. Yeah. 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 Which it's, it's psychotic. It's like, it's a $4,000 machine and a new, you know, a new equivalent of that quad is like 13.5 without power steering. 13. Psychotic. And if you go up to a thousand CC, it's like, it's like 16 grand. It does, it's, it's not even a question. This one's getting fixed, <laughs> you know? I wonder if they're pushing the prices closer to side by sides to just be like, just get a side by side. I think, side-by-side. I think it's just by nature of the development dollars go to the side by side so they can keep the prices for like the base level machines kind of in that like 18 to 20 range, 18 to 21. Whereas the quads, they're, you know, they have what's happening and that's it. And the prices are rising because not spending any more money on them. Hmm. Crazy. But just free profit. It's crazy. It's so crazy. 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 I still want to, I still want to drive a, an R max. You should. Yeah. I actually, I was listening to that episode yesterday with Kevin. Yeah. It was, it was good. I mean, the R max sounds amazing. Yeah. Did you see the Banshee on Hoon against this versus that? Yes. No. So, yes. 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 That was iconic. Maniac maniac and then they just had him in the yard again at their new uh location in compton and he was doing donuts like hanging off the side of it and that's just lock the front brake and just it's a, you did he wasn't locking the front brake though he was oh really was circle drifting it. like that's it was good. it was it was sick it's a um, drag quad yes and he's wheeling off the line like and he he won because the he the, won the, too that was having problems per amelia and it, I mean, it sounded like it was, and that's the, that that's still very much in development. Um, the uh, yeah, he won. He he won, and and that's a great series. They're kicking butt on that series. It's it's really it a great series. It's really um, really fun. It's it's but, funny, like the random crap they find to like put together. Like a, <laughs> a drag banshee, like drag racing in the ATV world is huge, but it's mostly on the dunes, not on tarmac. Oh yeah, yeah, Sandra. Yeah, no, this dude, this dude was ripping this thing. Um, it, it, it was awesome. Go watch it if you haven't seen it. Yeah. Worth definitely worth seeing. Yeah, that's a death machine. I don't want to do 120 miles per hour on a quad. No, thank you. It's <laughs> scary. Oh, scary it's scary enough. It's sick. Slicks in the back and look at the extended. That's I'm assuming that's an extended swing arm. And yep. So sick. That's like four or six inches further back than normal. Yeah, because those should be tucked up to the front of those rear fenders <laughs> yep. yeah that's 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 crazy so far away from it it's awesome oh. i'm assuming that was larry in the background it looked like his hat uh probably i think yeah. he was there for that one he's there for all of them <laughs> they shoot like five in a day i'm sure Excuse speaking me. of shooting five in a day how many shift talker episodes can you shoot in a day <laughs> uh, i mean we can do multiple but we only do usually one a day um really? we do well, you do one a week is is how it goes um and, and we're done for the we were done for the season weeks ago um so the our season two has been shot edited and aired on the app and then there's like a delay and then it goes to television uh in a little bit um i don't know what the actual timing is they call it going linear which is a term they're like yeah good news the because uh, shift talkers was developed just for the app in the height of the pandemic. It was the perfect show for that. Um, and for anybody who doesn't listening, doesn't know, it's on the Motor Trend app. It's showing Motor Trend, Zoom based panel show. And um, so it was perfect for that, but I guess it was so well received from you know upper management and, and initial app people that they're like, get this, make it linear, which I was like, what the fuck does linear mean? They're like, hey, congratulations, everywhere. It's linear. And the reason it's called linear on television is because shows happen in a linear order. Whereas on an app you or like mm-hmm. Netflix, you can just pick whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. So it makes sense when it's explained that way to you. You're like, oh, linear. And I just thought of actually a really good guest for this show who helped un- me understand the concept of linear. <laughs> nice. Uh, I should introduce you guys to my friend, Patrick Costello, who was the, uh, the executive producer of Top Gear when it was Rut, Adam and Tanner. Okay. Also did Truck Night in America. Oh, um, oh yeah. Oh, Re- that yeah. That's why that name's familiar. He's yep. restoring a Cherokee right now. Okay. Like and, an and XJ. Wanna, uh, yeah. He and I want to go um, 
race uh, side by side in like Baja or something. So we're trying oh, yeah. to make that happen. Patrick's a good guy. He'd be perfect. He would have so many stories from uh, Truck, Truck Night. Night America um, that it would be awesome. It really got him way deeper into the off-road where he went down to San Felipe to like pre-run with, um, what's the dude, Pistol, who died in the accident yeah. years yeah. ago. Uh, he was good friends with him, who that guy was a host on the show. Um, and I don't, he wasn't down there when Pistol died, but he was like planning at some point in the future running with Pistol. Oh, uh, so Patrick would be perfect for your show. Well, we have uh, connections to UTV Driver Magazine too, so right. Let's Mr. make Bowman. it happen. Bowman yes. and Kevin Ray. Yep. Yep. And I just hooked up Zach with one of my friends who does wheel stuff for UTV. So hopefully that connection happens. Too. Nice. <laughs> let's yeah. Let's do some some side by side racing. I <laughs> sounds so dangerous. <laughs> I was so bummed that I had the Talon outside for a. I I basically could have had it for an entire week, and I got probably in terms of total seat time um 30 minutes oh no what? Why? because we had to drive all the way out to barstow because there's nowhere i can't just rip a trail by me like i have to drive to trails right um, same and then oh. so we have to shoot the ridge line which was the more important of the vehicles to shoot because it was new um even though i hadn't yet driven the four cedar talon i really dig that hpd ridge line i want to talk about it later so continue yeah, on sure, the sure. uh yeah, keep going. Um, so we went out to the desert and we shot some stuff and then we, well, so we were out there shooting it. I also invited um, the Kelly Blue Book side of the family because I was shooting it for Auto Trader and Hooniverse. But it's like, hey guys, I got this. Meet us in the desert. You come shoot it too. So they were, while they were shooting the ridge line is when I took the talon and shot some stuff. And funny story, I had a teach, teachable moment <laughs> with the talon um, and trailers. I do not do a lot of trailering. Um, and so... When we got there, we got a shot of the Ridgeline trailer. You know, the vehicle would be like, look, we towed with it, blah, blah, blah. So then when it was time to take the talent off the trailer, I unhooked the trailer before taking the talent off the trailer. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, oh right boy. Now. Yeah. So the <laughs> I, trailer I don't trailer a lot either. I know that we have, we have footage of this, which we didn't put in the videos, obviously, though I should get it from Josh. Where Your oh, underwriter, your insurance doesn't know. <laughs> I'm right up. And then slammed down and almost smashed right on the tailgate of the truck. Uh huh. So we learned, do not unhook the trailer, you fucking idiots. <laughs> yeah. So that was fun. The only instance in which you can trailer. do that is if you get an actual like, like the the ball and the hitch stuck in the hitch, and you have to get it out, and then you oh, leave the trailer. Oh, that's a move to like release it. Yeah, yes. <laughs> you can break it free if it's rusted in. Oh. <laughs> I this was not that's not legal advice under any circumstances. This was not the case. We almost destroyed the tailgate of the of the it actually oh, raised it on the way back down and but like left like a tiny scuff. That's it. We're like so lucky. Josh was on the camera and he's like <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the go, go, go. That, yeah, it was awesome. The ta- the talent rips. The talent, yeah, the talent's pretty amazing. Um I like that the transmission is the game changer on the talent for me at least yep. yeah it's not it's definitely um, the travel none of that's you know revolutionary even though the fo- it does have fox live valve which is pretty fucking sick but still um it's the it's the gearbox gearbox is a game changer so ridgeline let's talk ridgeline because the change in the front end is a total total pivot for the ridgeline and it i mean if you don't know anything about trucks and you park that next to the Colorado Canyon Tacoma like it actually looks the part now yeah and I mean you've spent time in all of them you can probably attest to it it's a lot more comfortable than all of them especially the Tacoma well yeah the the Tacoma I spent we had this on the notes but I spent a bunch of hours in my best friend's Tacoma when I was in Colorado a few weeks ago and it is I mean it's immensely capable it's immensely capable, but it is the seating position is like unforgivably bad. As a truck, it's it's great, even though it's it's aged. In terms of seating position and comfort, it is absolutely like I don't get how you can even think to defend it. And most Toyota guys don't. They're like, yeah, no, no, no. Some do are like, no, it's it's fine, it's fine. You're crazy. Like, no, this no. is 
the worst seating position in any vehicle on sale today. Agreed. For years. Yep. It's a joke how bad it is. Their defense is, oh, but it'll be running longer than yours. Like, okay, great. Not the Ridgeline. Line. Ridge line won't, won't be. <laughs> right. Okay. So yeah. So HBD Ridgeline, tell us, is it uh, as, it looks money. great. Not worth the money. Really? Uh, what was, was the sticker on that one? The wheels are like, it's like 37. That's, that's the Ridgeline's biggest problem is the price. It, it starts too high. Whereas now I'm like, well, hmm, what about that Santa Cruz? Um, so the, <laughs> I really like the wheels. The wheels are fun. I wouldn't get them with the red. The truck I had was white and this gold wheel looks better. The fender flares and that shot you were showing, that side looks better. But on the other side where the fuel filler door, it looks real fucking janky. Um, and so all it is is a slightly different grill compared to the regular Ridgeline. Um, the wheels and the fenders, and that's basically it. And and it's 2800 bucks, which, I mean, I get wheels are expensive, but like this thing needs... Um, so the fender, see how it cuts into the fender, the fuel filler door? Yeah. So on the on the HPD version, the fender cutout goes around that, and it looks oh fucking God. stupid. It literally takes like a ninety degree angle out of a round shape. Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. yeah. So like that version looks better if you could throw the HPD wheels on it. But the thing that kills me is it's HPD. Like there should be some performance element, and it could be as simple as springs. Mm -hmm. um, it could be as simple as uh, intake and exhaust. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to be more power. Um, right. And I even, in my video review, which came out I think last week, uh, I think I think it would be even cool because it's the Ridgeline and it's HPD. If they went in, yeah, see, there's the cutout. That's Chris, the use it, that picture that I just said you. Look, pull that picture out. I really think they could take this yeah, that's, oh, that, that's that's a great picture. All fucking 180 I'm pixels. So glad Sorry. you sent that to me. <laughs> My bad. It was um, it was bigger. Never mind. Um, <laughs> I feel like because it's HPD, they could take this in two different directions and really run with it and make a street version and an off-road version. Where they should on the street one, they give it like um, do a different wheel, do a different tire, and then like drop it an inch or even two inches, and then on the off-road one do uh, maybe keep that wheel, do a knobby tire and then give it more travel mm -hmm. or make it a more aggressive exhaust, something to differentiate the, between the two. But even if they right. just half inch one, left, I mean, yeah, yeah. Shit. I mean, it doesn't need to be wild. Cause it, then like, if you lift a, I don't know how far you can lift one of these anyway, but, but if you minimally lift, goofy. So um, it, it, the, I, if I was buying a Ridgeline, I would not get the HPD package. Okay. Yeah, that's, I that's, mean that's totally fair. Those wheels are killer, but like realistically, right. the wheels and the grill, you could. How many people buy a Tacoma and then just throw a TRD Pro grill on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then plus, I'm I'm I like to do aftermarket shit anyway, so I'd be doing wheels and tires regardless. And so you know, I like the sport. Yeah, throw some fifteen fifty twos. I think you can get out the door in a sport for like thirty six, thirty five, which is still yeah. But realistically, like. This is going to do what most people want a pilot to do, but have a bed. Yeah. And yeah. in that instance, it's better for that task than a Colorado or a Tacoma, which is going to drive and ride like a truck. Right. You know? Yeah. It's definitely the most comfortable um, ride for sure. It definitely is. Yeah. I'm on car, cars.com. And I mean, there's some at like 34, 35, which... Okay, and I get I, it. I mean, I know we're saying that it makes a business right? case. I'm trying to think about what a, a Ranger Tremor is at right now because that's a that's a forty. I think they're like forty four to forty six. Are they that high? Okay, yeah. never mind. <laughs> and like a, a normal Ranger is still like thirty seven, thirty eight for like anything decent. The four by four, yeah. My yeah. my first reaction oh, when you said like thirty seven, I was like, well, that sounds reasonable <laughs> for for a new. I mean, it's not because you're going to be able to get. And again, this is going to be even less truck, but a fully loaded Santa Cruz is going to be under 40. Right. Um, and it's pretty cool. Um, it's the least truck. And, and Honda's not even calling it a truck. They're calling it like a sports activity vehicle. Like, they're not really they're not, they're not trying to pretend it's something it's not. Um and I, I if, imagine if they made like some badass end version of it, you know? I, I oh my God. Cool. We're talking about the Santa Cruz, right? Yeah, yeah. Supposedly they're making an end version of that, uh, that 
what the fuck is the name of the thing that looks like a uh, Lancia Integrale? Oh, the, uh, um, the uh, it's a five ion yeah. ionic five. What is it? Yeah, ionic five. I can't keep. Yeah, that it looks great, but supposedly they're making an N version of that. And uh, in Europe, they've already driven the Ionic, and all the reports are pretty good. It looks uh, great. What's his name? Um, from the late break show. Uh, yeah, forty six for a, a Ranger Tremor, by the way. Okay, damn! I thought they were less than that. That's a. I mean, that's Gladiator Rubicon price. Yeah. No option, Gladiator Rubicon, but still. I was gonna say, aren't I thought Ruby's got into the fives. They do. Yeah, Ruby's, Ruby's are. If you, you know, option Ruby's them. Are. Ooh. Perfect segue. Let's talk about really expensive Jeeps and really, <laughs> really, really overkilled Jeeps. Yes. So, I mean, hot topic of 2021 is Wrangler 392. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that right, okay. um, so it's crazy that you, that they, you can buy this without like secondary licensing requirements. Um, more so than like a Hellcat, like the secondary yes. license you oh, should yeah, be for yeah. Hellcat. I, well, sort of, because it's so it doesn't have as much horsepower on a, as a Hellcat. But imagine if you lift a Hellcat, <laughs> the, the center of gravity is like yeah. So like I twice. understand why they don't make this in a two door because that wheelbase would be on its side. Um, they sell the was, a lot of Mopar roll cages. I, yeah, I thought they slowed the steering, which to me made a lot of sense, but they didn't. It has the faster steering rack that is also in the diesel. Um, and but I think the reason, rack. I think the reason it felt slower to me is because of the Fox shocks had a bit more travel, and so I think it was slower to set, which was very helpful in not being insane. And people talk a lot of crap about Wrangler steering. And I actually don't have a problem with Wrangler steering because the Montero it's because I drive Montero. Um, I mean, so, that's, that's, that's like the principle of relativity. Right. <laughs> you know, so I thought, I thought the handling was, was like any other Wrangler. It, it felt fine. Just it's, it's louder than any other 6.4 vehicle I've driven because I think the exhaust is probably shorter. It's the first <laughs> dual mode 6.4 is what they were saying. First like ba- first baffled 6.4. Interesting. Well, when it's on, it's it's so fucking obnoxious in like a both a great way and a terrible way. Um, the gearbox was great because it's the eight speed, you know, and it, I mean, it's it's like the dumbest thing ever and it's still hilariously awesome. Is that a ZF or is that that torque flight thing? It's torque flight, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, It's it's absolutely ridiculous. Because I I didn't know this. I thought the Rubicons came with Foxes, but they come with like a Tenneco or something, like a different brand of shock. No, the Mojave comes with Fox. Right, only the Mojave Gladiator that gets the Fox. So now this also gets, because this also gets the Mojave front brakes, which are bigger. And then there was something else that got, oh, the scoop on the hood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The power charge thing, whatever they call it. Well, it's because it filters water out and, and like, it's just amazing. Hydra, it's amazing. Hydra guard you don't need to something. snorkel. The, the shit just can wash over the yeah. hood and it'll push the water out. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty amazing. And they, interestingly, they do sell a Mopar snorkel for the JL Jeeps. Uh, speaking of Jeeps, my friend just bought a, an AEV uh 370 oh nice called? yeah what yeah is, is it a 370 stand for is it an, it's not an engine video. swap it's a uh no it's like it's a ton of shit though it's a jlu mm-hmm. but then he also just posted and i don't know i mean he's doing much better than i thought he was because he also today posted on his youtube channel that he just bought a trx <laughs> what? oh shit i saw my first trx last saturday and it was at like it, i was stopped by the merit parkway and it was there was like crazy traffic and it was at the exit ramp at a stoplight behind a full-size Range Rover. And the hood was like almost at the top. I was like, how the, f-? there's the first one I've seen in person. I was like, okay, the, the full-size range is a big vehicle. Yeah. Like, how is this something that they're actually selling? And we're in the right. Miata and we're like, Oh boy, <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, there he is. Um, AJ. yeah, no. So, so AEV does these, they're kind of, they're like full suite comprehensive packages, basically. Yeah. So the 370, I don't know what their numbers mean anymore. Um, right. And we should really try to get 
Dave from AEV on the show, but it's it's like a you know it's suspension wheels tires lift um, those are you know, thirty armor thirty yeah. sevens you can fit thirty fives on a Rubicon with no lift that's fucking crazy and then this the funny thing is he had the, a diesel um, JL and he had so many problems with it it was like a buyback like so first that, first few yeah yeah and like he had check engine lights all the time so the funny thing was when I had that Wrangler I sent him a text I was like enjoy your fucking wimpy ass <laughs> And he said um, he was in his TRX that he just bought laughing and he didn't tell me that he bought the TRX. He's like, oh man, that thing's cool. And so when his TRX video came out, I, was, I didn't even comment. I was like, dude, what the fuck? And he's, yep. he's laughing. I'm going to sh- go shoot a video with him uh, in like a week or two because I get the TRX finally in the fleet on the 24th. So I was thinking it'd be funny if uh, I if he's like, yeah, I got one of the first TRXs I pull up, like, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him. Yeah. Just don't mess with him. Yeah. No, those, those AEV. Anybody who just saw that, go follow Photo Runner on yeah. uh, Instagram. I'm, uh, so AEV does those prospector builds. You yeah, know, he those. used to have one. So uh, imagine what AEV is going to do with the, with the TRX yeah. when they do like the full thing on that. It'll be it'll be nine thousand pounds, but his his prospector had forties, yeah, and probably could stuff them with no rub whatsoever. That's crazy. I mean, those those are trophy truck tires. That's insane. Yeah, but that's a slow. You're not doing any high speed runs in yeah. It's just the mass of it is so mind blowing, mind boggling. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I want to. I haven't seen a power wagon in a while, but I know you can fit like 38s on a power wagon with like literally no modifications. You need to live in truck country more because I feel like I see one every other day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. Also, I don't go out of the house anymore. So That's let's true. keep that in mind. You, yeah, you right. switch over to full remote for the day job. Yep. <laughs> I think the tires on my Montero are like almost 31s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, on the 4Runner too. Like what are fives or something? What are two sixty fives? Tire size seventy. I don't yeah. even know. Those have to be. Big. What's your wheel? Uh, sixteen. I don't remember. I know I can find it real quick though on a little website uh, called <laughs> Thirty. My tires are thirty one six on the Forerunner, and the tires on my brother's Can Am Commander side by side are thirty. 275, 70, R16. So they're not even they're not even listed in inches. Like it's almost a 31 or something like that. 75, 70, 16 is a 31, 2. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. So I thought it was just under 31. All right. There you yep. go. I mean, it, all, it also depends. That's like by the books, you know. Right, like right, right. A lot of manufacturers. I had 33 by 12 and a half pro comps on my Avalanche in like 2008. And they were like so they quote 33 and they were like 32 two, you know, <laughs> it's always totally arbitrary. You know, that's the, uh, I felt like when I was, uh, I don't remember which truck I was putting tires on, but I got on the, I hate mud forum. So it was, it was a land cruiser or a forerunner or the Sequoia. And they were talking about tire size and they're like, well, cause that's always, that's like the tripe or the trope, right? Like what's the biggest tire that I can fit? And they're like, well, which brand? Mm-hmm. You know, some of the brands are a little different yeah. size and it's the glory of those toyota guys are like well these are a little more honest to their size where if you go with this one you can go a size up because they're smaller there's a um, bunch of really cool comparisons of like 285 70 17 across you know bfg and like hankook and you know all the other manufacturers and it, it's it's pretty cool to see how they actually like how the sizes are the same but really aren't you are you still in talks with uh embargoed information on tires we can't talk about yet is that still proceeding yes i have to follow up with him because he said follow up and i it's you know i emailed him back and it's been like a week but yes all right good and tires we can't talk about yet so everybody stay tuned because i'm i'm talking to i'll just pretend and say a different company uh about a tire for the jag they have a classic set of tires oh Uh, nice sweet is it the same same company yes same company they make a a vintage tire cool yeah no i I really want to go on a drive with the pr person for the embargo tires he lives like 25 minutes away from me and he has an s2000 like 
Yeah, and he has access to uh, pretty awesome stuff. Lime Rock and Monticello. Yeah, no. And the boot. Is in Glickenhaus? Yeah. As in Glickenhaus, Ross, which is talk to this guy, also I, fairly close. And AI okay. <laughs> and I had to, yeah, I need to stop in there because that's like 15 minutes from me. Yeah, you should. <laughs> I you should. should. Um, I saw Glickenhaus driving that P45 thing on the hutch once. I was like, this, how is this a, a real person? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like seeing like the fucking. Batmobile, you know, he's a Bond yeah. villain, crazy, but like not the villain side, right? Yeah, he's got the mad yeah. money, but he's not. He's not actually trying to ruin yeah. the world. Um, yeah. Okay, speaking of prohibitively expensive vehicles, uh, you've driven a couple others. <laughs> so uh, the the Cross Turismo Taycan is that like the greatest thing ever? Yes, uh, the 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 it's uploaded to Hooniverse YouTube and scheduled to run next Monday. Um, which feels good to have a video. I never have videos out that far. Ahead. I also just finished Bronco Sport, which will go later and Outback Wilderness, which you're already listening to this, came out on the 17th, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, it's uh, I'm never that far ahead of my videos, but I'm going on, finally going back east to visit family because I get my second shot tomorrow. Nice. Uh, well, Ooh, I got mine today. I feel like the which one. Do you really? Uh, I yeah. uh, Pfizer. Pfizer. Yeah. I also one. had, I also had it and you know, it, it's, it's not, I'm not day, having a good time. Day one, a couple weeks ago, my left arm hurt really bad for a day, but that was it. Like I, right. um, I can't my lift friend. my left arm over my head right now. Oh, I believe you. My <laughs> wife got her second one today and she doesn't, no, I haven't heard anything bad yet. So um, Sarah and I got our second ones from Pfizer last week and my left knee magically hurt for like 36 hours. That's just old guy shit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm yeah. it on the shot. <laughs> uh, okay, so looking for an excuse. Um, yes, the title of the video is something like "This is the best car ever" or something like that. Um, okay, and it it is. It it's 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 an electric Porsche wagon. And just think about those words. Uh, it has a gravel mode. It's um, absurd. I already love the Taycan. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, and I'm enjoying electric, electric vehicles more and more as I drive them. I, I will always have a gas vehicle, but I would love to have an EV daily driver. My dream garage, if I had to like, just if they're like, you could only have two vehicles and that's it. Um, it would be a uh, Taycan Cross Turismo and the upcoming V8 Defender. You know, like assuming I had the money to afford them. Um, I but, have fantasy dreams about the V8 Defender. Yeah, <laughs> it's no, not good. Sure. And if but but if they said, okay, out of those two, now you can only have one of them, I would take the Porsche. Um, it's it's so so, and that's a Euro spec car because it has a metal roof, which we don't get, mm -hmm. which was kind of cool. Um, and it's a shame we don't get that. We um, only get like full panoramic glass. Yes. And there's actually three roofs. There's the metal roof, there's a glass roof, and then there's a glass roof with provisions for roof rails. And we get the third one. Um, that's probably the, the best one though. It is, but, but it's, it's a bummer that we don't, they don't offer the metal roof. You know, um, I don't know. It's just because Germans are like no nonsense. That car doesn't even have a uh, keyless entry. What? Um, you what, was the, what was the sticker? Walking, the German spec car. Well, the base price is 90. I, so it wouldn't translate. I don't know what the sticker was, but the base price of it's a Taycan Cross Turismo is $90,900. And it doesn't have keyless entry? For Germany, it wouldn't. For the US, it definitely does. The car is just, I mean. It looks fantastic. Oh, man. Gained it on Angela's, it has a, instead of the sport chrono right there, go back to that last one. It has a compass <clears throat> and an altimeter. That's pretty cool. Yeah. The last, I, I bet you the last vehicle on sale to have a, a physical altimeter was the FJ. Mm, good question. Probably, how late like, did the FJ go? 2013. Like right? 13 and 14 were the yeah, last FJ I, years. Uh, was, um, a physical altimeter physical not like range rover on the dash or anything right, right, right. also speaking of like um of the cross turismo you know sport turismo shape i'm working my way through the top gear back catalog and i'm up to the chris harris matt leblanc eric and the episode i was watching today was the one where they had the panamera sport turismo the twin turbo v8 one and leblanc obviously had the ff um, or no, the it's not an FS at that point. They call it the 
Uh, yeah, they changed the name. Um, what the fuck is the name of that thing? The um, other, the same what, car, the same name. Ferrari with more power and right. a higher price. Um, but the the Luso, the, Luso. yeah, yeah, yeah. Luso. Uh, but the the Porsche sounds so good and it's such the right shape. It's it like oh god. So imagine that with like instant torque and um, this one, the cross turismo. <laughs> higher than a sport turismo more instant torque than a twin turbo porsche v8 yeah definitely um yeah and i love the sport turismo um the gts sport turismo is one of the best cars i've ever driven but the the two times i've had a tycon sedan i it's 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 very rare for me because i've been doing this for so long now where i have a car where i'm like oh man i'm gonna miss this like i don't care what it is like mclaren and it could be in the driveway. I'd be like, cool, on to the next one. Like, <laughs> see ya. Every time I've had a Taycan, it's like, God damn, how do I how do I find a way to afford that? And the 392 Wrangler didn't do that? Fuck no. Uh, really? I only had that for two days. Um, the, the V8 Defender might do that um, because the, the 110 that I've driven, the P400, I was like, because those are like, for what it is, I feel like a P400 is v- extremely reasonably be reasonably priced for what it is because it is still a land rover it's still nice inside it's one of the most capable vehicles you can buy um and it's like if you it's, get a low spec it's wrangler rubicon territory it's probably the second most capable vehicle on sale right now yeah what do you think is the most uh probably a either diesel or gas powered wrangler rubicon i will say I will say it's it's a tie even with the tires it had on it but a tire swap away from um the uh, the time I had a G550 mm-hmm. um I've it the trail I run the tallest peak in Orange County um nothing was that comfortable like it was hilarious how com- uh, my daughter fell asleep on the drive yeah that's wild i remember like, you saying range that. rovers and all that shit my montero is actually really comfortable on it because of the shocks and the bouncy seat the bouncy seat helps but the the g class was like absolutely and i've taken every jeep up there too the and the the glad the diesel jeep is awesome because you're literally just cruising at 1500 rpm you're not even mm-hmm. trying it's uh, and the the g class was I'd never driven a G-Class prior, so I can't speak to the older versions. And I know they made these newer ones more comfortable because that was kind of like they were, they were G-Classes um, that just happened to be bought by fancy people. This one, the on-road manners destroy a Jeep, obviously, because um, it's, you know, it's a V8 and it drives really, really well on the road, better than it has any right to do, which is something that Mercedes and Land Rover get better than Jeep, but they should because they cost so much more. Also, they have... Um, independent air suspension, suspension. yeah and yeah, jeep's still working with shit. two sticks yeah. that don't right. go like that right, right. two solid yeah exactly yeah where it's like oh my when the fact when they were like you press a button and it detaches the sway bar people were like i mean that is still a, a great party trick although you have to be at a total stop to do that and the yeah. jeep and i saw a video in the bronco and you can do it at speed oh shit really yeah you can like not not like 50 it's like a dumb <laughs> but, party trick though because it's so be, good that going down the highway because they're like yeah oh, oh shit <laughs> well then you just push the button again and fucking yeah. lock the sway bars back on unless you're on the side by that point my last fourth gen forerunner had no sway bars and it was like turn you, you would like turn the wheel wait a two count and then it would <laughs> load up on the bump stops and it was like it was literally a roller coaster and you just like counter and go back and then it would like and then you're, you're pretending it's a trophy truck. No, in the whole time you're just waiting for the tank slapper. <laughs> oh, yeah. The uh, so I think it the the Bronco at speed disconnect. That's just you popped off the highway and you don't want to stop to go run the dunes yeah. by you, like. Or you happen upon an, an obstacle and you weren't expecting to need the sway bars to be disconnected. And have an oh fuck moment and go bloop and it's just you're you're fine. Yeah, but I feel like by the time you hit that and you're past it, it's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bar connected. yeah, probably. Um, um, so shifty. did you? Way, I was supposed to go on the drive for that, and it, I I I didn't go. Oh wow! The Bronco. Um, so we got the invites for Kelly Blue Book and Auto Trader and uh, uh, someone else in a different 
part of the company um, didn't realize that we should send two video people to do it. And they sent, they're sending a freelancer. And so um, someone's like, oh, well, shit. So now instead, then Lynn is going as well. So then Lynn is that's good videos for both outlets. Okay. Okay. Well, but at least it's happening. It's happening relatively soon. Uh, and, and uh, Micah Musio, technically my boss at Cox auto is uh, he got his, his like build date. So his is coming. Oh, really? Yeah. Didn't they're, they're coming. I saw Didn't something on Twitter. Today Camille else being put a, like, yeah. Camille put a deposit down. I, yeah. I don't know if, I don't know how far he went. I don't know if he made all the, he, I don't know how far along he is. Uh, our friend, Josh. How far along he is. Oh. Is <laughs> uh, Josh did his full order. He's like right at four. Oh, Josh ordered one. Yeah. yeah no yeah. shit. Really? Sasquatch. Um, his came to, he, he wanted to keep it under 40 and it came out to like just 40 and then they got that notice they sent out to everybody waiting that because of their waiting they're knocking 500 off and including the headliner so it pushed them down to like 39 and he was like nice yeah yeah i built one like the ideal bronco the other day and it was like 46 i was like oh yep, there goes that yeah <laughs> you know? yeah that's meanwhile why I, when i was talking about the the defender the 110 i, I was like uh, cause I, I, I love the steelies, but you can only get the steelies on the four and I don't want the yep. four cylinder. And I was looking at the prices of like, you could swap the brakes. We know that you could swap the brakes, but I don't want to swap the brakes. I, you know, if I'm getting the bigger engine, I want the big brakes. And plus uh, at that point, again, 1552 is the analogs, which is a cool looking wheel. And they are, and there are other steel like rotiform probably is a fucking steel looking wheel at this point. Now Dude, the, the 1552 um, analogs, are, those are great. When I ordered, when I got the wheels for my Montero, like literally getting them put on my truck, I was there with Matt Crook from 1552 on his phone. He showed me the analogs that hadn't come out yet. I was like, dude, you motherfucker. (laughs) What are you doing? You're literally like, I would have spent that money. (laughs) He's laughing because he was, I think the attention was originally making those because I think he has an FJ80 or a 60. uh, And his idea was like, he wanted thinner, um, the thinner tire look, which I totally Mm -hmm. get. You yeah, it's got to be a sixty. Yep. You don't. You don't want pizza to, cutters. You don't want pizza cutters on an eighty. They weren't full pizza cutters. Why not? You pizza like cutters it? rule. Not on an eighty. I, I could be wrong about it. I've a, been on the trail with an eighty on pizza cutters. It, it is a lot wrong. of weight. It's a lot of weight for that. Wrong. Pizza cutter e load index. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no sidewall flex. Man, They're down to twelve. Yeah. Uh, I don't care about PSI in my truck and I like every mountain bike ride. I'm like, what should I do today for PSI? (laughs) (laughs) They're tubeless, which is like essentially like beadlocks, you know, (laughs) for all intents and purposes. Yeah. And every every time I'm on like climbing though on the bike, I'm like, fuck, like I need more air in the tires. I got to start airing them up and then don't bring like a little like tube pump. I I like to carry as little shit as possible. I don't wear a backpack. I just have one water bottle. Mm -hmm. Uh, My bike is carbon though. So I have a thing where I can remove the water bottle holder and there's a space in the frame to store shit. What? Yeah. Cause it's hollow. It's carbon. So I have like a crazy hole and this thing that fits in there um, with the CO2 thing. If I got, if I got a flat, um, Mm -hmm. um, I could like get it up back up to, and I have like chain breakers and shit like that. Oh shit. I had no idea. That's awesome. I'll yeah. be back in 30 seconds. 30 seconds. I was trying to Counting. find Matt's. Oh, good shirt. Link Cruiser. <laughs> I don't know if I even bought that one. <laughs> I usually get them all for uh, Sloan, though. Well, that's Fit Garage. I got this the other day from the Montero world. Uh, it's going to focus. Is it a coin? It's like a, it has a 3M backing. Oh, and sweet. I'll... So it'll be like a badge. Yeah. There it is. Oh, drive driven wild. design. Drive wild. Yeah. They do a lot of cool stuff. They made um bushings for the uh, idler arm, like hard, hard bushings. Okay. So I'm gonna install those in the Montero soon. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't even get into your seat swap. Oh yeah, we can talk about that still. <laughs> <laughs> the sticker's cool too because it has like oh, it's like an iridescent. Yeah. I have one of those on the truck. That's actually kind of sweet. Got a bunch yeah. of Larry Chen stickers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a like a four by four word one. We those need, guys, those we, guys. Ross and I need to send you a podcast sticker. Yeah, if you have them, sure. You, you made a podcast sticker. 
I mean, we could probably try to sell it on Blipshift if you guys want. Yeah, I, it's easier yeah. to drop ship from them than not. <laughs> yeah. If we can make enough to pay for the Zoom, that'd be great. <laughs> it's like six, 1683 a month. That's kind of a lot. It is. It is a lot, especially in sticker sales. Oh, do I have the? No, oh, I don't want to take those ones off. So Jeff's going to tell us about his broken seat now, Ross. Yes. Oh. Okay, so project car stuff. Alluded to this earlier. Um, I was dropping the Wrangler off at the office. Oh, fuck. I was dropping the Wrangler off at the office. I'm sorry, the Montero off the office to pick up the Wrangler. Um, and as soon as I like, I jumped out and I got back in it. I felt the seat give like way, which sucks. It's never good. I've lost weight during the pandemic, so this was demoralizing. Um, <laughs> That's the, that bracket it attaches the right side of the driver's side seat back to the seat base. And it literally just sheared off, um, which fucking sucks. Yeah, it does. So, I mean, rather, that's metal fatigue. You, I mean, metal fatigue. you yeah. could blame yourself, but like, I mean, it's, it's a 30 year old truck. And the chassis, uh, from what I understand, the chassis has 300,000 miles on it because it was an RV tow behind Mm -hmm. um the 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 odometer only says 189 because they swapped that at some point um <laughs> the um so i i rather than being trucked down i just moved the passenger seat to driver's side and driver's side to passenger side in the interim um and it just doesn't feel right you know because it's like not worn in the same the <laughs> the right side is worn down and the left yeah, side has like, more bolsters like, <laughs> um, so that's the and the passenger sides and i took the sheepskin off finally because uh it was hiding the driver's seat you can see the day yeah. and the passenger seat's in much better shape but it just d isn't worn the same way and then i talked to a dude who went to a junkyard and pulled me a driver's seat and he's shipping it to me but it's as soon as i said yeah ship it and i paid him the money the it's a lower trim so it doesn't have the lum the lumbar and it's a different pattern and i'm like mother fucker Just and so i'm going on the montero classifieds it'll go well i'm gonna like try to like take pieces from one seat and make it work with the other seat you know and i don't know we'll see what happens that sounds sketchy i mean no like if i'm gonna take like i'll take the good seat back and they take like the material off the good the driver's seat pattern you know and the lumbar if i can do that i don't know we'll see. but it also like the shop where i get a lot of my stuff done said we could just weld that for you <laughs> <laughs> which would have been a lot cheaper like look at andrew, andrew collins comment i bet you could find somebody to weld that for you <laughs> yeah seriously he would know is it yeah. it's got to be nice that like a bunch of the auto writers that exist in the world all have monteros it's it's pretty funny to be honest. Uh, I'm one of the few ones, Lynn and I, with the Gen ones. Um, it feels like we actually kind of have the most of the bases covered. There was another guy who had a Gen one, and I guess it was a big pile of shit, which is unfortunate because it looks clean. Kyle Hyatt, he's already sold, bought it, and sold it. Um, yeah, uh, and Lynn's is beautiful. Her paint job on it is she got it repainted. It's excellent, um, but it's a four cylinder. I would mm -hmm. never want to drive a four cylinder automatic, even though her truck oh. is absolutely lovely. And she's the, spending all her time on the XL7. Yeah. And the automatic in those though, too, is the better trans. Apparently it's more in terms of toughness, really? but is it a GM trans? Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know much about the four cylinder. I just know that, it, or sorry, the automatic, I just know that everybody says it's stronger. But uh, I'd much rather have the manual. Um, yeah. Just oh my god! I just if I'm oh. dealing with what 160 horse when it was new, I want the manual gearbox. Um, but yeah, so the, otherwise the Montero's doing okay. It's it's got a, the exhaust on it now, which sounds good. There's like a weird off throttle noise, which has me concerned. Where it's like blah 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 off throttle. I'm like the fuck is that? Like it it, it sounds more raucous than it should be. That's like. It, it it burns oil, um, which like every all of them do. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't. How much? It doesn't smoke it out the back. Nothing's like leaking, um, but it just seems to like consume a like fair every, every thousand like a, miles or two thousand miles. Yeah, it takes a quarter. You just hear it, like it gets like clackier than normal, and you're like, oh shit, let me just check that real quick. Yeah, the, the eighty series did that too. Like I I put a quart in every thousand miles. Yeah, 2, but it's not like there's no blue. The Via Cross did a quart every five hundred. There. <laughs> Every 500? <laughs> yeah. That's like every two gas Phillips. Yeah, that's a lot. I don't know, across. It's like every... 
Or in the suburban, um, that's one Philip. <laughs> the uh, the Montero selections on the uh, the Facebook Marketplace over here are scary. Are they? Oh yeah, boy! The East scary. Coast Montero sounds like I a need terrible to stop idea. looking at all that shit because it's they like, don't shit. handle rust well. No. Somebody, I I did see oh, a comment. I, I was browsing on Cars and Bids the other day, and somebody made a comment about. They've never seen an FJ Cruiser with body rust. They're like, they need to put that shit on all the old Camrys. Like, whatever <laughs> they did on the FJ Cruisers, they they hang in there. That's funny. Uh, but the Iron Pig is supposed to be like just an absolute pile of rust waiting to fall apart. The 55s, from yeah. what I've heard. Even though those are like the coolest looking ones. Well, it's it's only the coolest one because that's the one that they had the crash in in 50 first dates, right? Like. I, I don't know. I, it, it is. I, okay. <laughs> it doesn't know. That wasn't uh, a question. I'm sorry. That was yep. more of a statement. <laughs> yeah. That movie holds up. Let the record show. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. So, so Montero's in, in, uh, it, it's, li- it's living minus the seat. Montero's. Yeah. Uh, yes. Montero in, in general is in, in, in fine shape. It's fine. Montero's yeah. fine. And the Jag's good. And the, uh, as far as I know, uh, the trans, probably is going to need a rebuild at some point but and, and i was asking because you can swap in so this has the borg warner model 66 three-speed automatic and um you a lot of people can also go with the 700 r4 gm four speed mm-hmm. and i was asking the shop I'm like oh what do those go for thinking to be like oh they're nothing you know they're a dime a dozen apparently everybody bought them up and now all they do oh. is build them he's like so a clean one is two thousand dollars i was like oh holy shit like that's how much like uh, an LQ engine is. And, and so I was like, all right, we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait. <laughs> wait until it fails. Yeah. No, yeah we'll deal with it as needed. Has any progress been made on the wagon or is the wagon just a, uh, it's paperweight. <laughs> they, they, they keep saying as soon as this one project in the corner is done, yours goes into the corner. So we'll see oh. what happens. Okay. I've heard that for months now. As long as I'm not paying storage, I it's kind of like a just put it in the back of the mind thing. Yeah. Um, it's funny though, because it the, that shop is very close to where my daughter's kindergarten is. So I, I if I drive my if I'm driving my daughter's school, yeah. <laughs> Does she wave at her wave? She knows it's there too. She, oh, she, she knows. She, she's she knows. aware. <laughs> she knows. Your kid's pretty smart when it comes to that stuff. She's got... yeah, yeah. She can start. She's starting to identify cars too. And I'm not pushing it on her. One day she's just like, "Is, is that a Mazda? Like, like mommy's car?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah. Is that a Honda? Yeah." That's so. It's all right. The kid who of my four, the kid who did that the most, has the least interest in them now. Yeah, but he could okay. do them all when he was like three. Oh yeah, that's funny. Uh, Ross, do you really want to go through these comments? Oh, you actually pulled out comments? Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't I pull totally them out. For, I was browsing. I forgot, I forgot about that. <laughs> that actually don't was like, Twitch. no, at this point, we should. We should uh, oh, next time, you should switch. I haven't had a Rugged Ridge comment in a while. The new one is F-250 Tremor. Oh, oh really? Really? Yes. Let's, uh, yeah, let's. Um, yes. Yeah, let's so, do it. The, oh my God. the rugged I, ones are always great. Before we get there, just to touch on a, a, a topic of current events, the house that came on the market yesterday that we were planning to go look at tomorrow has sold. sold. Yeah. That sounds about right. I got I got mine the day it went on. It was listed and I was dropping kids off at school and I was like, hey, that's a new sign. And we saw it that night. We Crazy. put in our offer that night and they had to cancel 12 listings. And that was six years ago. <laughs> We've already refied and we haven't been here a year. Yeah. Uh, and our value went up $110,000. Holy, Holy fucking shit. And they missed it. I think it should have gone up 115. No, 120. A God bit. damn. So, I know someone who sold a house in Dana Point for 160 over asking. What? Yeah. I mean, we put an offer in on a house that was 50 over asking, waiving everything with 20% down, and we got outbid by 50 grand. Jesus. 20% down too, waiving everything? God damn. damn. Can't win. My, my favorite is we sold a house six years ago for 209 and the house across the street from us just listed last week for like 360 something. And it's... <laughs> We're sexy. <laughs> yeah, come Sorry. come to the Midwest, Ross. We have affordable houses. 
<laughs> yeah, where what range are you looking in, Ross? Do you want to feel like saying? I'm 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 no. <laughs> it's, uh, no. It's no. <laughs> it's we, did the, we did the refi too recently too. We just yeah, did it a say? year ago and we're like, we're not doing that for a long time. And they were like, hey, I mean, we're gonna take it down a whole point and a half. Yeah, right. No, it, it, the price range we're looking at is like the crazy psychotic range of death apparently yeah but if you like, if you're if you're putting 20 percent, i mean you're, you're a good doesn't you're matter a it doesn't matter fairfield county is like the highest increase in growth of any county in the country right now because everybody's moving out of the city and just like literally buying stuff for cash it's like six hundred thousand dollar homes going for cash but can't yeah, do our condo was an all cash uh sale Oh my God! I'm looking at the Can't tremor. Do comments. Can't do it. Can't do it. Oh, you found the tremor. Okay, yeah. Let's let's talk about let's uh yeah. <laughs> so uh, to to tee it up, um, I drove the Ford F250 tremor, which on paper is like, oh, this can be kind of cool, and it's just it I, it didn't sing to me. And it's funny because I'm a Ford guy. I love Ford shit. Acer um, or diesel? It was a seven point three. It's it the Godzilla. Seven, okay, motor, right. Yeah. Is that what's yeah. called Godzilla motor? The fucking thing. The engine's great. That. Is probably but, the same truck that Kevin Ray drove, and sure, and 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 it's just it's too fucking big for an off road vehicle. That's the, I mean, like, yeah. yep. And I even say in the video, it it only makes sense in areas like Texas if you live on like an oil field or a ranch, and and apparently listening skills and comprehension weren't the strong suits of this video because they hear the first part where i'm like i don't get the f-250 tremor and i still don't i think it's fucking stupid um like just get a raptor uh it doesn't really do anything really particularly well right right because if you need to tow don't don't buy a tremor don't get the tremor version yeah Um, and, and if you need to go off road, you don't buy an F two fifty. Right. My, like, my, right. It's my like, favorite part are there literally comments talking about like all I want to do is tow with it, and you're like, that's not the right truck. <laughs> so, and it's funny because in the Ridgeline video, I kind of like lose it a little bit, where I'm like, because I, I referenced the other video. Um, <laughs> so yeah, if you watch, the, yeah, if you watch the Ridgeline video and you see me lose it a little bit, it's because I'm thinking of the F-250 Tremor video. And then people are, cause I say like something about how the fact that apparently everybody who buys that truck is a libertarian ranch owner, millionaire in Texas. Um, because I mean, yeah, expensive. Sure, the tow rating is good, but it's not as good as a non-Tremor fucking F-250. What was uh, the sticker on the one you drove? I have, I don't even remember. I mean, it must've been 65, 75. Yeah, yeah, probably. Um, yeah. Because I mean, I've driven F-150s that aren't lariats now that are in the 70s. Um, so fucking crazy. Comments are are all like like literally. It's very anti-Californian liberal bullshit. Um, which I mean, fair point. That's what I am. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. But, but at the same time, I do talks like talks like a dog. Talks like yeah, okay. But I do like trucks. <laughs> <laughs> so like like we could be cool if you weren't such a stupid <laughs> asshole um, um yeah it's like it, it's a different type of comment than the rugged ridge video obviously that was a yeah i mean <laughs> the, the rugged ridge video also came out at a time uh that was particularly inflammatory <laughs> yes but i i when i shot it it was before it was crazy yeah. so I, the joke was like a throwaway joke and i waited to edit it which was my fault uh, was it really that long ago that it was a throwaway joke? Yeah, it was, it was. It was when he was oh. thinking of becoming a candidate. Like oh he was a candidate. Uh, and then by the time I edited it, he was a candidate. And no. it was, yeah. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the Jeep was cool. I mean, <laughs> whatever. But the yeah. other is currently the, the bane. <laughs> on my channel um but whatever fuck those people chris you got anything good you want to no <laughs> you know no. oh no, no. it's it, <laughs> like i just want to firebomb the comment section of it's right. just it's just it's literally the epitome of youtube comments like yeah it's it's, it's a good example of like yeah like they don't they're not actually listening 
They're, right. they're just hearing what they want to hate on and stop there. Yep. And, and, and because it, everything's gotten so much more inflammatory, it's immediately goes to the, you know, this guy's a liberal queer, you know, like, like, exactly. Dude. Okay. Like somebody like this guy's probably never driven off road. Like, okay, sure. It's, yeah. so, it's, it's got to be literally a link being shared between each other and no one is familiar. Yeah, yeah. With you. It, it, hit, it hit a forum somewhere yeah. and they're more like, boom, but whatever. Keep keep viewing it. 14,000 years uh, later. Clicking on it, asshole. <laughs> the most recent comment on the Rugged Ridge video is, I love how butthurt everyone is getting over the comments this dude makes on politics, guns, and Jeep owners. By the end of the video, I was more entertained by the comments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 uh, that, that's a fair, that's a fair comment. Your There's a couple comments now in the tremor video that have come back and been like, like you people are, you know, crazy. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, go watch the uh, F two fifty tremor video if you want to. Well, don't even watch it. You don't have to. Nobody needs to watch it unless you want to see where I literally say in the video, like I could see maybe Texas, like in California, it doesn't make sense. It's already hard enough to park a full size. Um, like what is it three quarter ton or not even three quarter half ton sorry um those are already difficult to park even though with the new ford they like sloped the hood a little bit to it's it's it better. doesn't matter it but they're so big um and then the 250 tremor it's like this is fucking stupid Dude, i was with camille at the auto show when they released that and i remember looking at it and being like i can walk under the mirror <laughs> like it's not even funny like and i have then, to take like a running leap to get into it and the whole idea of like off-roading to me so that's probably where my mindset is and that's maybe the problem is either trail running or baja blasting and this is not what you would do for either of those i can do either yeah no. trail running you want something small out yep. in the desert i want a raptor you know so the 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 place that you're going to get the tremor to is the same place that a guy with a fucking minivan will be able to drive through because the tremor is so big. Yeah. Whereas somebody with a power wagon will probably take it a place, you know, and like use the equipment. The tremor is just like it's a, it's okay. a show truck for people yeah. in Dallas. Oh no, no, they're in Kansas City too. Oh, okay. Where is <laughs> the tremor? Um, Ranger package is actually pretty cool. Yeah, pretty yeah. Cool. almost. It was, it was half a good the truck. Price. It, was, it was a good truck, even though it kind of broke on us at one point. It was really weird. We were doing shit out in the desert, and I was like hammering it, like drifting around um, sage scrub and and shit. And then like all the lights came on, and like I had no more power steering. And we came to a stop. We waited. We waited. We waited. Turned it off. Turned it on. Was still there. It was like fuck. Did I just break this truck? Because we have to drive all like two hours back to, and I did it again. <laughs> let it sit longer. Turned it on. Everything was fine. I was like, so I like I tripped something where it was like too much yaw or like it's like you're gonna crash, you know, like yep. and so whatever. But the, every everything else up to that point was great, yeah. and it was fine after. I'm was, very curious to see this upcoming Ford Maverick thing, mm. whatever it is. Could be cool. you know it could it could be cool i mean i mean shit it, if nothing else it's something that'll fight the santa fe santa fe cruz santa cruz santa cruz santa fe is the suv yeah santa cruz that's that's what i meant um and you know also the grizzle line and and if that forces hyundai to do an n or o or whatever it is that makes it an off-road thing and it forces you know honda to do something that's not just a trim package for hpd then great you know that's that's more usable and that's more in the vein of what people actually are like actually going to use the capabilities of than an f-250 trimmer I must say, <laughs> you know I say uh across <laughs> the hill there i wonder if the, it's a it must say maverick where it's all like black and whited out across Maybe. the hill I bet that's his probably because the Broncos is Bronco. There. Those are are those are Bronco uh, Badlands wheels and tires. Uh, are they upspec? I think it's Outer sure. Banks wheels. Outer Banks, because the the Badlands has those dope um, steel looking wheels. I think uh, the steel right. wheels are an option. I don't think they're, they're an, standard. They are an option. I don't think they're the standard wheel. They're yeah right. They are an option. I want to zoom in on the window sticker. 
Okay. Oh. It looks like it's. There. Oh, there's a window sticker on there. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> That's got to be something else for their internal testing. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Something. Uh, but if they do like a, uh, if they, yeah, the Maverick, you know, um, I'm sure it'll have the three cylinder. Uh, yep. Hold so. on, real fast. Why, why are Detroit buses? Is that a turbo on their sign? Like, <laughs> it's probably a roundabout sign. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, though. Could be a carpool sign. I think it's a bus stop. I have no idea. <laughs> Literally no idea. <laughs> no. All right. It's late here, which means it's even later by Ross. It's late um, o'clock. Jeff late. still has the entire evening to go. Yeah, I was late. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. No complaints. Um, if we wrap this up, you can rate and review the show on iTunes. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. I hate that phrase. Um, Horrible. Get used to it. Get, I've started saying it more. You got to fucking say it. Yeah. Horrible. I know. Uh, I know. Jeff's on Instagram and Twitter at Hooniverse Jeff. Yeah. I didn't miss anything. No. Nope. Uh, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. Ross is no, not like the one from Friends, and I'm at Overlaney Dad. That's our show. We're done. We did it. <laughs> That's it. Nice. Every every time we get to the end, and it's like, all right, now what? Yep. Yeah.